Hi, welcome to Storytime by Elise. Today, I'm going to be reading Little Duck on the Moon by Mark Bergs. Little Duck on the Moon. It was a wild and windy morning. Little Duck wanted to go out to look for her breakfast, but she didn't like the wind one bit. She waited and waited, but the wind just kept on blowing. I shall have to go out said Little Duck at last, for she was very hungry. She stepped cautiously out of her nest, but at the very moment a ferocious gust of wind swept Little Duck right off her feet and up into the air. Help! she cried. Little Duck tried to fly back down to the ground, but the strong wind carried her higher and higher, tossing her round and round and she until she was quite dizzy. In no time at all, she was above the clouds, drifting further and further from the world below. The pond and trees grew smaller and smaller until Little Duck could not see them at all. Suddenly she began to fall, but Little Duck didn't fall back towards the blue earth. She fell towards the moon. Little Duck landed on the moon with a bump. She picked herself up, shook off the moon dust, and wondered what to do next. There did not seem to be any ponds on the moon. Just then, Little Duck heard a toot toot behind her. She turned around to see the man in the moon and his dog, Wigwag. Hello, said the man in the moon. For a moment, we thought you were a broken promise. I'm not a broken promise. I'm Little Duck, she said. And I don't know how I shall ever get home again. It's too, it looks too far to fly. Well, we'll worry about that later, said the man in the moon. First, let's go and have some breakfast. Then we've got 23 rainbows to make from all of these broken promises. At the moment, mention of breakfast, Little Duck remembered how hungry she was. She jumped straight into the man in the moon's car. The back of the car was full of broken promises, soft and shiny and all different colours. Where, where do these broken promises come from? she asked. From the blue moon, explained Wigwag. That's where I'm from too. When they got home, the man in the moon made breakfast. There's toast and honey. What could be better? he said, putting a plate in front of Little Duck. Thank you, said Little Duck politely, but the toast was too hard for her to eat, so she just licked off the honey. When the man in the moon wasn't looking, Little Duck slipped the slice of bread under her wing as she didn't want to offend him. Goodness, have you finished already, said the man in the moon, and she gave Little Duck another slice of toast. She sleep slipped that discreetly under her other wing. After breakfast, Wigwag and the man in the moon set to work making rainbows, stitching the broken promises together with fine thread. What are these bro rainbows for? asked Little Duck. They're for the blue earth, explained Wigwag, so that there will be hope in the world. Wigwag and the man in the moon worked hard at the last rainbows were finished. Wigwag tied on the labels. I know, explained the man in the moon. We'll send you back home on a rainbow. We'll need an extra one, said Wigwag. And we've got no more broken promises. Then we'll go out and find some more, said the man in the moon. Little duck, be sure to look out for squeakies. While we are gone, otherwise they'll sneak in and snatch the rainbows. When Wigwag and the Man in the Moon had gone, Little Duck did her best to watch out for the squeakies. But it had been a very busy morning and her eyes kept closing. She just dozed off when squeaky laughter woke her up with a start. Stop! Stop! shouted Little Duck. Stop! You mustn't take the rainbows! You mustn't! Or there'll be no more hope in the world. The squeakies took no notice. They were running for the door. Little Duck saw her only chance to 
was to get there before them. She jumped up, ran across the table as fast as she could. Then with a tremendous leap, she landed at the door just in front of the squeakies. Stop! shouted Little Duck, spreading out her wings to bar the way. As Little Duck lifted up her wings, out fell the pieces of toast. The squeakies stopped in their tracks. Dropping the rainbow, they sniffed the toast and then began to nibble at, at it. Soon they had gobbled up both slices, ran off giggling. Were these squeakies? asked the man in the moon, who had just returned. Thank goodness they didn't take the rainbows. Well done, little duck. I think they just wanted some breakfast, said little duck. Maybe if you leave out toast for them, they'll leave your rainbows alone. Soon little duck's rainbow was finished. The man of the moon wrote a special label for it and we grag tied it on. Then they carried all the rainbows outside. The man of the moon lifted each rainbow into the air and let it gently float away towards the beautiful blue earth. Little duck balanced herself on top of the last rainbow and held on tight. The man of the moon lifted up the rainbow and gave it a little push as he let go. Bye bye, said the man in the moon a wig bag. Bye bye, said the little duck, and thank you. Little duck's rainbow floated slowly away from the moon towards the earth. As it drifted down, the rainbow slowly grew larger and larger, shimmering with all different colours. Soon it was a huge arch, and little duck was just a tiny speck on top. When the clouds parted, little duck could see familiar green fields and woods below. As she got closer, she saw the pond where she lived at one at one end of the rainbow. Little duck flapped her wings a few times, then she slid down the rainbow and slashed into the pond. Happily, she bobbed under the water to wash off the moon dust. Then little duck ate her breakfast at last. When Little Duck looked up into the sky again, she saw the rainbow had disappeared. But Little Duck knew that her friends on the moon would be very busy making more to give the whole world hope. The end. I hope you guys liked it and will come back for another story again. And can you please like and subscribe? That will help me out. But if you don't, it's fine. But I hope you guys did like the story. And yeah, bye.